So I'm extremely honored to, to speak at this conference and uh, in this great occasion. So I'll, I'll try to be not very, to not to be very boring. <laughs> so for first of all, this is a, uh, what I'm going to talk about. It's a, uh, part of joint work with uh, Kai Chilipak, and it's taken partially from our book uh, about uh, symplectic geometry of Stein manifold. And also, it uses some uh, result of some my joint work with my former student, Amy Murphy, and also with uh, Tobias Ekholm and Ivan Smith. So, uh, in several complex variables, there is this important notions of different convexity. So there is a, uh, you can give a given, say, compact set in uh, CN, you can define its polynomial hull, its rational hull, and you can define its polynomial hull in some domain which contain in K. And this is just, uh, you, you take all points which you cannot separate by absolute value of either polynomial or rational function, or holomorphic function, and of course, when you talk about holomorphic function, you can need to say where this holomorphic function is defined. And respectively, the set, compact set, is called rationally polynomially convex if it's its hull, corresponding hull can coincide with the set itself. So in the case of, uh, uh, yeah, so rational convexity is in fact kind of very easy to, to show that just equivalent to the fact that you can, for every point, you can find uh, some polynomial which is vanishes at this point and does not vanish at on, on the set itself. So like through every point away from this set, you can pass hypersurface, not intersecting the compact set. So uh, holomorphic convexity is kind of slightly more subtle because, uh, again, you, you have to say where the holomorphic function defined, and so usually uh, you, you define, you say, first define holomorphic convexity for open set, you say that it's uh, holomorphically convex, that the hull of every compact set is compact in this thing, and the compact set is holomorphically convex if it's, it's the intersection of uh, its holomorphically convex neighborhoods. So this is a kind of very classical, classical notion which really set is kind of a part theory of high dimension, uh, kind of several complex variable and one dimensional variable because this notion in dimension one kind of completely trivial and so like everything holomorphically or rationally convex and uh, polynomial convexity is actually equivalent to be simply connected of this domain. So, uh, so of course polynomial convexity is the kind of strongest notion and because it's a smallest class and slightly bigger class, rationally convex, and, and then holomorphic convex is the biggest class of the domain. And they, of course, related, related to many, many uh, other, there's a, this was subject of research from the beginning of uh, uh, 20th century, and there was a lot of uh, kind of different, different interpretation of this holomorphic convexity uh, found in, in terms of this uh, so-called uh, domain of holomorphism, the second maximal domain of existence of uh, holomorphic function. And also there is a, some description, like in uh, Riemannian geometry, you can de describe connexity, co convexity in terms of uh, ge differential geometric convexity of the boundary. Similar uh, situation is here. So you can, define convexity in kind of differential geometric term. And namely, if you have a just on the complex manifold, or let's say just on the domain in CN, if you have a real valued function, then this real valued function, it uh, automatically generate certain uh, uh, one one form. This calls DDC phi or DD bar phi, this, or this is the form in local coordinates it look like. And function is called, I call it I convex, if this form is positive definite. So, so this is a, 
uh, like in traditional traditional ter terminology is called strictly plurisubharmonic. And similarly, hypersurface, real hypersurface in complex. And, and J also not the same as I. Okay. Yes, it's like a good, a good check. Okay, so what? Uh, fun function, uh, okay, so, well, fun function do doesn't matter what function, but it's not, not uh, well, at least derivative have meaning, so at least C2. Right, uh, other question? Okay, so, uh, so, in hypersurfaces, I convex if uh, it's a level set of I convex function properly coriented, or you can define it more intrinsically in, in terms of so-called Levy form, which is a mean normal curvature in complex directions. So, uh, generally, I, so why, why, why do I like I convexity? Because also I want to talk about J convexity for for uh, say different complex structure, and I just want to kind of stress dependence of com complex structure. I guess. Sometimes it's, it's uh, useful to consider family of complex structure on, the, on manifold and kind of say with respect to which complex structure it's actually convex. And also, I really hate all this word strict plurisubharmonic and strict pseudo convex because it's really kind of make uh, things kind of inaccessible for audience outside several complex variable because it's like, who, who, who can learn such terribly long words? <laughs> so, uh, no, but uh, I am actually serious, because, uh, because uh, you know, this pseudo-convexity uh, and uh, this, this, this notion of convexity is extremely basic mathematical notion. Nothing pseudo in it. It's kind of, it's uh, in, in as basic as this convexity, maybe may, may even more basic than real convexity. So, so slightly, uh, I will kind of talking about terminology. I will be using the word cabordism and the word domain. No, cabordism is kind of standard notion of cabordism, and domain for me is a cabordism for which uh, negative negative boundary is empty. So for me, domain. So dom domain. No, so domain domain could be just manifold, manif compact manifold with boundary. And, and uh, so um, uh, the domain in CN, it's embedded domain, uh, the embedded domain CN. So unlike well, more traditional views in, in, in analysis, domain is closed set, not open. Mm. So, uh, and I will be kind of like, uh, when we're talking about cabordism, we, we like to consider function which is constant on the boundary and attain minimum and maximum boundary component. And I will be calling such function defining. So defining function, always function on cabordism, which is, say, maximum and minimum boundaries. And respectively, on, on if we take a domain, the, the defining function is, has a maximum on the boundary. So convexity for domain it's just the same, I convexity for the domain is the same as the convexity for, uh, for, for its boundary. And again, in the uh, uh, traditional terminology, this is called uh, pseudo-convexity, so, or strict pseudo-convexity. So now, I also downgrading traditional terminology. So for me, convexity is strict convexity. And when, when it's convexity and not strict convexity, I call it weak convexity. So, uh, so when you have a kind of this is a simple fact in complex analysis that if you have a, any weakly convex, I convex the domains and you can slightly shrink and, and from inside approximated by, by strictly I convex one. It's not put true if you're trying to go outside. So this is a kind of classical theorem of Emilio Levy is that every holomorphically convex domain is weakly I-convex. And it's a conversely, Oka theorem is that I-convex domain is holomorphically convex. And while well, there was a lot of kind of development 
So this is a kind of what's called DV problem, and there was a lot of kind of development there for weekly iconvex domain, and for domain not in CN but in some other manifold, and all these names are made great contribution to this. So I will also using the word Stein domain. So Stein domain for me is again domain, so it's a complex manifold with boundary, and such that it admits a defining j-convex function. So in particular, boundary of this domain is j-convex. And state domain is a synonym of an i-convex domain. So also I will be talking about stein cabordism So stein cabordism well, again, it's a complex manifold with two pieces of boundary, and you have a defining j-convex function. So now this is already subtle because this thing like static abortism, while in kind of in the standard standard uh, uh, complex analysis, if you have an interior of Stein domain, then this is always itself so-called Stein manifold, and particularly it can be realized as a properly embedded manifold, complex manifold of CN. This is not true for Stein abortism. So yes. Yes, you know, but, but conve convexity already Im imply orientation. The word convex imply orientation. Yeah, so domain, right? Orientation, orientation of the boundary, which is not the one kind of the function. So there are two orientation. No, no, but you have a function which has a maximum on the boundary. And so. When I when I have a cabordism, then there's a two domain. So one domain is concave, convex, and the negative is concave. Oh, concave yeah. Yes, one concave, right. Can we, can we say cabordism? Can we, cabordism, when I talk about cabordism, that's kind of, it's a, well, for, with respect to this orientation, positive boundary convex, negative concave. Okay. No, function give you also, if you orient by gradient of function, yes, they can, yeah, they, no, if you, if you are, 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 are yet, if you orient by gradient of function, they both convex, yeah, if you, but if you state our state domain, okay. Okay, so, uh, so I already kind of mentioned this, but let's kind of summarize all this symplectic feature embedded. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, I, Okay, and now you can guess what is convex, what is concave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so no, so now 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 let me kind of summarize all this all this uh, features uh, kind of symplectic feature embedded embedded in this con convexity. So as I said, well, every J convex function is a just potential of Keller metric. Just you have a you have a, I already mentioned mentioned that generate this omega phi and and this omega phi is in fact imaginary part of Keller of uh, some Hermitian form, and uh, there is a also corresponding kind of metric associated with this phi. So then you can compute gradient vector field with respect to me this metric is itself generate and. This gradient vector field is so-called Liouville vector field for symplectic forms. So, so flow of this vector field dilate symplectic form. Or equivalently, you can say that it's a vector field which is omega phi dual to uh, Liouville form, meaning primitive of symplectic form. So it's kind of immediately from the description follows that when you take a stable manifold of critical points, stable with respect to this gradient vector field, then they are isotropic, symplectic form vanishes on them. And in particular, indices of all critical points of, of J convex function are no more than half. So also on the level set, you have you have a canonical context context structure. This context structure is given by this restriction of this Liouville form to this, or you can say it's just given by complex tangent subspaces inside level sets. So the corollary of this is that any 
I convex or Stein domain it means that defining Morse function without critical points of index greater than n, in particular, it has a homotopy type of n-dimensional skeleton. So this is a kind of like look like trivial fact in this context, but it was a subject of long, long development, beginning from Lefschetz and Andreotti and kind of many other names. So when you take a, this Liouville vector field and just flow in negative direction, flow in negative direction many the domains and it kind of retracts to the skeleton, which is a union of the stable manifold. And so I will denote it by K phi and call it skeleton of W. So, so the skeleton has arbitrary small neighborhood, which is diffeomorphic to, to the whole domain. So this is kind of this picture which I'm talking about. So you have a, this uh, stable manifold, which is, say, in the top dimension is Lagrangian disk, and it attached to the level set along Legendrian boundaries, so the n-1 n minus one dimensional sphere, which is tangent to this canonical context structure which we have here. So uh, this kind of long time ago, I proved the theorem that in dimension greater than complex dimension greater than two, uh, any domain which is admit just the, the Morse, the Morse function without critical point of figure greater than n is isotopic to, to a Stein domain, to I convex domain. So that means that there is no topological, additional topological constraint, constraint on, on, on Stein domain compared just to the, uh, besides this fact that they have to have a homotopy type of something half dimension. So the key analytic ingredient in the proof is the following kind of proposition, that, that if you have already Stein domain, and we have this, this picture, which was uh, actually on the previous slide, but let me again just draw this. You have this already Stein domain with some iconvex boundary, and then you attach any, say, totally real uh, disk along Legendrian boundary, then this union has arbitrary small neighborhood, which is again, again Stein domain. So, so, so therefore, everything just in order to construct Stein, Stein domain, you just need to be able to, to construct this totally real manifold Legendrian boundary. And there is a Gromov H principle for this totally real embeddings, and this then solve and answer this question. So, so now, my kind of what I'm just subject of what, what uh, of my talk. I want to really completely cl answer the question, at least in dimension greater than two. What is a, are there what a kind of constraint exists on topology of polynomial or rationally convex domain? So, as far as I don't know, not much known about this, and kind of there is a, I, I'll mention some fact, maybe somebody knows more, but kind of I, I didn't know much before, before this. So, first of all, there exists the following uh, kind of criteria for polynomial and rational convexity. So, for this one kind of implicitly go back to Oka, though, though probably not possible to find exact formulation like this. But uh, uh, that I go this if you have already I convex domain, it's polynomially convex, uh, even only if uh, it's sub-level set of globally defined plurisubharmonic or I convex function. So if, if you get kind of this, every I convex domain has this defining I convex function, if it just extend to the whole space. And I said, uh, doesn't matter how, but it extends to the whole space, then, then this is a polynomial convex. And it's very easy if it extends anyhow, you can make it extended, uh, extending and have standards, for instance, equal z squared at infinity. Yeah, no, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It's uh, nothing. No, 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 you don't need anything. But if you have uh, any extension, then you can find proper extension. 
exhausting stage. Just taking maximum of this function and just this square function. So for rational convexity, there is a criterion which is going back to uh, Duval and Sibanian with some uh, kind of reformulation of Nemirovsky, which says the following thing, that domain is uh, rationally convex. If there you can find this defining iconvex function, you cannot extend it as a defining uh, iconvex function to the whole space. But this the corresponding form DDCF or minus DDCF, this, the scalar in form, extend as a scalar form to the whole sphere. So, which means that extend, like for symplectic geometers, that means that extend as a symplectic form, which is compatible with, with the standard complex structure. So, so this kind of like allows to, to, to prove the following, the following proposition. Okay, so, so, what, what, uh, so I said that in this kind of proof, my, my proof of, uh, of theorem, uh, for for just Stein domain, that crucial crucial point was that if you have a totally real cell, then this union with this totally real cell has a uh, the Stein domain neighborhood. And what is a uh, kind of turns out to be true that if you have a not just isotropic cell, uh, no not just totally real cell, but isotropic cell. So it means the cell for which standard symplectic form vanishes on, on this one. Isotropic is the standard style. Then you, you can have a neighborhood for this which is rationally convex. So, so this is a kind of slight generalization, again, of, of the theorem of Duval, who was proving that um, if you take a Lagrangian submanifold, that Lagrangian submanifold tubular neighborhood of Lagrangian sufficiently small tubular neighborhood is rationally convex. So, so, so this is a kind of version, ver version, uh, version of that. So, so, so therefore, this kind of reduces the whole problem about topology of rationally convex domain to the following symplectic question. So, suppose you have a suppose you have a Stein domain, and you have a some defining J-convex Morse function. So, and suppose that you can take, so, so you see this induced symplectic form is not necessarily equal to the standard symplectic form. But suppose you can re-embed it to, to, to the space such that it will be symplectic embedding of this one. Then, the, if, you, if you take this skeleton, image of the skeleton, it's now, uh, because for the skeleton or for this function, was isotropic for this symplectic form. Now symplectically embed, and it's a, uh, isotropic for the standard symplectic structure. And hence, now if, if you, by, by this, uh, kind of using the theorem, if you take its tubular neighborhood, it becoming rationally convex. So this is a kind of, so therefore, essentially, everything reduced to simple question about symplectic topology. It, it, okay, it, it will be even only if. I, and I, I will say later about polynomial convexity. Okay, so, so here's the kind of main theorem. So it says, suppose you have again domain in the space of Cn, n greater than 2. n equal 2 is a special case. Uh, if I have time, I'll say then a little bit about this. Then uh, this domain is isotopic to a rationally convex domain, just exactly under the same condition that you have a for just iconvex domain. So there is no extra constraint on the topology of rationally convex domain. Whatever is possible for just Stein domain, you can do for rational convex. And for polynomially convex, you have a one more necessary, necessary insufficient condition, namely that top homology vanishes. And you want also this top homology vanishes with all, all coefficients, which is equivalent to the fact that and minus first homology have no torsion. So this condition is obviously necessary. In fact, it's a, I say obviously necessary, but it's a kind of it's called Serre theorem. So because uh, uh, what? 
it follows from OCO theorem. But, but the, yes, indeed, it's exactly follows from OCO theorem. Uh, can you hear me? Because yeah. Okay. So, uh, indeed, because like if, if you have a globally defined function, then if you have a already n dimensional homology and you are attaching only n handle, you cannot kill them. But somehow, this, all this more theoretic interpretation was not very much clear in the kind of beginning. Okay, so le let me let me note that like for uh, this condition of the second theorem for the polynomial convexity, of course, in the simply connected case, it's just equivalent, just by uh, Smale theorem, it's equivalent to the fact that uh, you have a defining function without critical points of index greater or equal than n, so up to n minus one. But if it's not simply connected, then you can construct examples of domain which satisfy to, to this condition, but say have a non-trivial uh, relative homotopy group uh, in, in dimension n, so, so you cannot find function without critical points of index n. So now I kind of I explain where this all this coming from. It turns out that there is a certain class of Stein domain, and I will define them a little bit later, which uh, I call flexible, and which have a lot of kind of essentially for which symplectic topology is is kind of degenerate. So for, for for this flexible domain, you have a kind of the following the following result. So any domain, first of all, any domain in CN, you can I formulated the theorem that any domain which you admit defining function without critical points of index greater than is isotopic to Stein domain. So now you can just say it actually is a topic to flexible Stein domain. So any topology, Stein topology can be realized by flexible domain in dimension at least six. So any two smoothly isotopic flexible Stein domain are isotopics through I-convex domain. So, so, so there is a essentially kind of there is a absolutely no uh, again constraint on, on, on symplectic side. And then also given any flexible Stein Stein uh, Stein even cobordism, not necessarily domain, and you have a defining defining function. Uh, without critical points of index greater than n, then any such function is equivalent to, to a, an iconvex function. So you can just realize, realize any function on the given cobordism as iconvex function. By isotopy of this function. So in particular, for flexible domain, you have a that kind of like plurisubharmonic version of h cobordism. So if it's kind of topologically product, then you have a Morse function without iconvex Morse function without critical point on this cobordism. And this is a this is a only true for flexible domains. So for instance, if you go to, to general Stein domain that there's extremely rich symplectic topology, which told tells us this is not true. So like there's ma many examples. So in, in the kind of uh, the, the last thing that if you have a flexible Stein domain and you, you take kind of any defining iconvex function, then this inclusion W in CN is isotopic to a symplectic embedding. So this is a kind of exactly property which if you remember in terms of this criteria I, I needed. So in particular, in particular, this would allow me to uh, to realize that it's rationally convex domain. You take a no, sorry. You take a you take a already Stein domain. Yeah. So you already have the domain in CN, and there's a indu you have a plus point function which induces symplectic form there, and then you can just isotope it that it in the class still keeping it I convex that it becoming no, 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 not keeping. This, uh, I'm saying nothing. Just, just isotopic, uh, so to make it symplectic embedding. Okay, 
So now I kind of uh, I, I need to define 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 this flexible flexible domain and kind of tell you a little bit about this kind of like uh, progress on this uh, flexible side of symplectic topology. So in the whole symplectic topology is essentially kind of rotates around the problem of Lagrangian intersections. Okay, so the fact that Lagrangian manifold tends to kind of their intersection theory governed by Morse theory rather than like homological intersection theory is as a kind of is a main thing which tell uh, which uh, kind of uh, bring symplectic topology to life. And in contact geometry, kind of the corresponding problem is a problem of Legendrian as a topic of Legendrian submanifold. So, kind of the, the, the important thing is that there are some subtle invariants coming from theory of homomorphic curve, which kind of pro, uh, prohibit uh, two uh, nodes to be Legendrian as a topic. But it turns out that there exists certain class of, of Legendrian node for, 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 for which this H for, for which we have actually H principle. There's no no specially symplectic invariant. So you know there is a some kind of very general general fact coming back to Misha's old work that if you take a well say you have a Legendrian Legend well, what is what is Legendrian not? Kind of let me So, for instance, suppose what, what is a Legendrian not in uh, uh, in R three? So we have a say we have R three with a standard standard contact structure. Let's call it D Z minus Y D X. It's a standard. You don't have to see it. Okay. So, so and you you think you think you you think about this uh, R three as a kind of the as a one jet space of of function on line, and so you have this three coordinate axis x y z, and now if you have a function z equal f of x, then and you write y is equal f prime of x, so if you take kind of this simultaneous graph of function and derivative. Then it will be curve which satisfies this condition d z is equal y d x, so it becoming tangent to contact structure, becoming Legendrian curve. So, in fact, any curve which is graphical for it to be Legendrian just means that it's a it's a also called holonomic section, a simultaneous graph of function and derivative. So, but if general Legendrian curve if you project it to the x, it's not necessarily graphical. It would project to some something which is called front of the Legendre. It's kind of like graph of multi-valued multi functions. And so, if you have a not Legendrian curve, so, so what, 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 how, do, how do you reconstruct from this front Legendrian curve? You just add at every point a uh, slope of the tangent line. But if you have a not Legendrian curve for which y is not f prime of x, then you have a just some uh, line you can kind of encode it by 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 taking line field which is with the slope given by by the y coordinate. And so now it's obvious that if you have a such, such thing, that you can immediately consider this front which kind of look like this. And so you you get front such that at every point slope is uh, essentially the same as, a, as, as this uh, given coordinate and that means that you can approximate any uh, curve by Legendrian curve. And similarly you have a isotopy, topological isotopy you, you approximate it by Legendrian isotopy if you're allowed to do this. But the problem is that this original, your original curve was not Legendrian isotopic to this one. So what I proved is the following. So you, you take Legendrian, Legendrian curve, and then you do this operation at the very beginning. You add some kind of number of this zigzags, small zigzag like this. And if, I call this operation stabilization. So if you stabilize your Legendrian curve 
enough, then they become Legendre. And as a topic, there's a symplectic topology disappears. And in dimension three, there was a, a lot of kind of study of this property, and people were proving, for instance, results that in order to, to make fine Legendrian as a topic of two Legendrian uh, as a topic of uh, two curve, then uh, no finite stabilization is sufficient. You may kind of need to stabilize any number of times. But what kind of what uh, uh, my student Amy Murphy proved that in dimension turns out to be in dimension greater than greater than three. If it's not Legendrian, uh, one, one dimensional, then one stabilization is always sufficient. So you can stay start with this Legendrian curve and just do this kind of local and analog of the zigzag in high dimension, and then Legendrian not completely is becoming flexible, and hence just there is no symplectic topology anymore. So, yeah, the zigzag is point our roots male maybe. Yeah, yeah. So this this is a, okay. So I, I I learned it from Misha, but kind of like indeed this is a this is a point our root, and but maybe it's male as well. Okay, so. So, so this kind of so, so this is what I am saying that this uh, what, what uh, there's this notion of loose knot and we say that knot is loose if it's stabilization kind of in this sense of some other knot. So the important thing you can make any knot loose by kind of local uh, modification in the neighborhood of one point. And the Murphy proved that for <coughs> loose knots. Formal Legendrian isotopy, that means just isotopy, just kind of topological isotopy together with some kind of covering family of Legendrian homomorphism is, can be... Uh, how, how you so, okay, so, there, there, there is a, so there, there is a, you can have this model of stabilization. So, so you say, is it loose if you can find charts, Darpu charts, which can which contain which is equivalent to this? What? Yeah, no, you can talk, call them stable, but stable is kind of overused word. Okay, so now what 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 turns out to be to true is that when when you look at this uh, loose Legendre node that this kind of, this phenomena, in fact, propagate also to Lagrangian embedding as well, to symplectic geometry. Let's kind of consider the following problem. So suppose you have a ball in symplectic space, and you're trying, you're trying to find, you have a ball, and you find trying to find Lagrangian disk with outside of this ball with Legendrian boundary. So I actually tried it for a long time to construct such such ball, no, just construct any Lagrangian, Lagrangian disk in the complement of the ball. Inside ball, you can easily construct it. You take an equator, Lagrangian equator of this ball. But can you construct Lagrangian disk outside balls with Legendrian boundary? So you can prove that in dimension, in dimension uh, four, a complex dimension two, it cannot exist because it would violate kind of so-called slice panic inequality. So, but turns out, and that this is our joint uh, theorem with Murphy, that if in dimension, uh, sorry, here's, here's a, no, it's not written that uh, dimension greater than two, in any, any kind of uh, dimension greater, greater than uh, real dimension four, for, for this embeddings, for, for the embeddings of, uh, of this, uh, uh, L DL v in CN minus v, well, it's not written with boundary with boundary in uh, in 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 the uh, in the boundary of the domain you have a if the boundary is loose then you have a H principle so in particular it kind of implies the following things that the triviality of just complexified tangent bundle of this manifold is necessary in sufficient condition for existence for a possibility to attach this embedded Lagrangian to this boundary. For instance, disk 
it's always true for disk. So disk exists in abundance. But so far, I didn't see a single example. It's kind of it's a challenge to anybody construct a, any Lagrangian disk in any dimension. I, I mean, the theorems that they exist, kind of plenty of them. But I, I don't know any simple example. I'm not non simple either. Disk, Lagrangian disk is a complement ball with Legendrian boundary on the ball. But they exist. So, so this time, so, so now this, this leads to this notion of flexible, flex, flexible cobordism. So Stein cobordism uh, together with defining J-convex function. Well, first of all, called elementary if there is no gradient trajectory trajectory of this gradient vector field connecting critical point. And of course, any cobordism can be sliced into elementary one. And elementary cobordism is called flexible if all top dimensional Lagrangian disk, stable disk attached along loose Legendre nodes. There is no constraint on, uh, on, on, on uh, index less than n critical point. So the general, general Lagrangian cobordism is called flexible if, you can, if it admits a uh, function for which you can, uh, if you, if you, you can slice it by elementary flexible Stein cobordism. And then this flexible Stein cobordism has this, all this great fantastic property which I already mentioned before. That I already formulated the theory. So, so this kind of uh, immediately immediately implies it's not math theorem. I don't know why it <laughs> became math theory. It's supposed to be main theory. The <laughs> this is a this is a this is, a, this is my, my editor somehow it automatically correct my my mistake. So we have to decide that main should be math. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway. So. Uh, so the, the, the theorem which I already said, that suppose we have a given any flexible Stein cobordism, then any defining Morse function without critical points of index greater than n uh, is equivalent to I-convex function. So this is, of course, immediately implies main theorem in the polynomial convex case using the following kind of very simple topological lemma, so which says if you have a domain which admit this Morse function without critical point of index n, and which satisfies this condition that there is no n-dimensional homology, then you can always extend this function just as a Morse function without critical point of index uh, greater than n, and uh, make it standard uh, at infinity. So, so then you just take this function using this theorem realize it as a i convex function and then sub level set corresponding is a, is becoming uh, by by this theorem of oka becoming polynomially convex so similarly this theorem which i which i said that uh, if you have a flexible flexible stein domain and you have a this defining defining i convex function then the inclusion is isotopic to symplectic embedding. And then together with this surrounding theorem, which I said that uh, if you already find the symplectic embedding, then the skeleton becoming isotropic with respect to standard structure. So therefore, therefore when, when you take a surround, uh, you can surround it by, uh, by this lemma, which I said, by this iconvex domain, which automatically becoming rationally convex. And moreover, what, what is kind of interesting is that if you started with domain which was I convex, then this gives me isotopy to rational convex domain through I convex domain. So let me kind of talk a little bit about kind of possible generalization and some open problems. So first of all, first of all, everything holds, you can just replace, uh, replace Cn by any Stein manifold, and then instead of polynomial convexity, you talk convexity with respect to this algebra of globally defined holomorphic function or globally defined meromorphic function. So, so then, then this kind of exactly the same kind of hold, 
except that this condition that top homology for polynomial convex or meromorphic convexity, the top homology is trivial, you get a condition that on the n-dimensional homology you have an injection into, into the homology of the ambient manifold. So I would think, so the question, is it this condition, so I, uh, that the domain is flexible, is it necessary or not for polynomial convexity? So you see, let me kind of just d d describe a little bit more of this thing. So kind of wh what I can, in fact, conjecture that it, it is indeed necessary. Definition, Definition of flexible means that you can find this uh, defining iconvex function such that when you kind of slice it by elementary cobordism, then all top dimensional cell attach along this loose or stable node. So for instance, admit, admit such a function. Mm -hmm. So if, if for instance, it's subcritical for the admit function without critical point, then it's automatically loose. Ball is loose. Okay, so uh, you see that what follows from, 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 from all these things is the following. So if you take a polynomially convex domain, then because, so, so there exists this kind of Stein structure on the whole space, given by, by the plurality harmonic function on the whole space, and you can make this function standard at infinity, for which this is a sublevel set. And it follows from this that symplectic Homology, okay, I don't have a time to, to define it, but kind of certain invariant of this domain is in fact equal to zero. For instance, it follows that this manifold cannot contain any Lagrangian submanifold in embedded. So, so it kind of, so flexible domain all have this property and uh, it's kind of, I have a, some, some kind of path how I, I would try to prove that, although I don't know the proof. So similar question for the rational convexity and, uh, but in the case of simply connected domain. You see, so what was known before the theorem, what was known example of kind of, of, of rational convex domain? So I think the most example were coming just from this construction of Duvali, Duvali Sibani, and some uh, other people or around like, exploring this Lagrangian embedding. So if, for instance, if you have a Lagrangian submanifold, then the neighborhood, neighborhood is, is uh, uh, rationally convex. But according, according to Gromov theorem, this, if for instance, is a Lagrangian manifold simply connected, you cannot find Lagrangian embedding in CF. And so question, is it possible to find any uh, and I think this was an open problem before this, what, what the theorem that is it possible to find rationally convex domain which is simply connected but have non-trivial top dimensional homology. So well, now, now we see that in, in high dimensions there are plenty of them but, but so, so the question are all these examples again have to be flexible. So now let's move to dimension two. So in dimension two, we know everything, or dimension four real, everything is different. So, so for instance, let's take a, the following question, and this is a conjecture. Let's take a domain, which is a, topologically is a unit cotangent bundle, I mean disk, bun disk cotangent bundle of, of some two-dimensional surface. And then, if you have a Lagrangian embedding of this surface in, in R4, then we have uh, this rationally convex, con convex domain uh, which is neighborhood of the surface. Question, are these are the only examples? So is it true that if you have, so, so suppose you have an embedding, embedding of this neighborhood, of this smooth embedding into R4, which is isotopic to rationally uh, convex domain. Suppose you have embedding such that Im image is, uh, is rationally convex. Is this true that then the embedding of the core sphere 
of zero section is isotopic to Lagrangian embedding. So it's quite likely that this is true. In high dimension, as I understand, there was a similar conjecture, which this theorem which I talked about says that it's wrong. But in the dimension four, it still could be correct. So for instance, for instance, if you have a client neighborhood of client bottles, and you never can realize it as a uh, rationally convex domain in R4. Or if you have a neighborhood of kind of torus, T2 cross D2, that you cannot realize it in any other isotopic class as a just standard embedding of Lagrangian torus. So I, I essentially finished, but I just want, want to say few few words just in general about this this, uh, this kind of symplectic flexibility which, which I was exploring. So you see, this theorem about existence of this Lagrangian caps, in fact, can be reformulated as follows. So, so we know that when you have a Lagrangian, Lagrangian embedding, well, for instance, like you have a Arnold conjecture, but which is called theorem, which is a Gromov theorem, which says that if you take a, say, cotangent bundle and you take a zero section, then you cannot, then you cannot have an exact Lagrangian embedding. Well, there's no exact Lagrangian submanifold in cotangent bundle. So for instance, you cannot by, uh, find like embedding, embedding of, uh, of zero section, which it does not intersect zero section. And of course, the fact that you cannot disjoin it by, uh, by Hamiltonian isotopy is an early result of uh, uh, Laudenbach's Sikharov. So, but turns out that if you take uh, any Lagrangian manifold anywhere, and you can do the following local modification. You just take, a, take a, this Lagrangian manifold and take a kind of one point and take a, some small neighborhood of this one point and replace it in this neighborhood. So, well, it's a big neighborhood I draw. So you, you replay, replace a small Lagrangian disk by some kind of cone over, over some Legendrian node. So topologically, this will be a node. And even for any formal kind of property, it will be like flat. But it will be a, as a Legendrian, kind of Lagrangian, it will be not locally flat. It will be cone over non-trivial Legendrian node. And so you do it at one point. And after that, this Lagrangian manifold becoming completely flexible. You can, by Hamiltonian isotopy, you can disjoin it with anything. So kind of this, this just kind of simple <coughs> procedure kill the whole symplectic topology. And it's also allowed to make all these constructions. Okay, thank you.